All right, in this video, what we're going to look at is the gravitational potential energy um, and figuring out how much energy is stored in an object when it's uh, at some position above the ground or above some reference point. So again, this is going to start with uh, the idea that we require work or a transfer of energy in order to lift or move an object in a gravitational field. So I put up here, uh, the energy stored in an object due to its height above a reference point in an area where the force of gravity can act on it to make it fall. Sort of a loose definition, um, but at the same time, uh, kind of give you a hint at what this is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna derive how much energy or how much work is required to lift an object from some point to another point in space. Uh, we're gonna use this little cat right here uh, to do this. So what we're going to assign is that we're going to say that this cat has some mass m. All right. And this cat is well, it's floating in space right now, but we can assume that something has lifted it up to this position. And what we're going to say is that we're going to say that this point down here, this reference point down at this point, is our distance h subscript 1. Okay? So this vertical Height. So this is our initial height h1 and we're lifting the cat to a new position h2. Now all of you will recognize that in order to lift an object from one position to another um, and we'll call this point right here this h1 we'll call this the reference point okay. and we know that it takes energy to lift it up there or work is required okay a transfer of energy this height right here is delta H we know that if we take the final height H2 and we subtract the initial height H1 that will tell us how much height the object has gained so if this is 0 and that's 10 10 minus 0 is 10 meters um, height if this height here is 7 and this height is 10, 10 minus 7, we've lifted the object 3 meters. So again, that's important because we're talking about the work done to lift an object from one position to another. So here's what we're going to do for this derivation. We're going to lift a mass m from the starting position. starting position h1 to a new height h2 all right so in this case we know that work is done okay so work is done on the cat well if work's done on the cat we all know that the work done is given by this. That's delta D cosine theta. But like before with the kinetic energy, we're going to assume that the angle theta is zero degrees because the force that we're acting upwards on the cat is in the same direction as the displacement. So we understand that lifting this object up requires a force upwards and we're displacing it in the upwards direction. That means that the force and the displacement are parallel, so the angle is zero, and we know that the cosine of zero is just equal to one. So we get our simple um, work equals force times distance. Okay, looking at this diagram over here, we can see that in order to lift the cat at a constant speed, and we know that constant speed implies that the acceleration is zero. Now obviously at the initial bit we need to overcome gravity, so there will be some acceleration right at the beginning, but we assume that that acceleration happens instantly and that we're moving upwards at a constant speed. So if there's no acceleration, we know that the upward force must balance the downward force. So the force that we're applying 
the F in this case, the F from over here, the force that's acting on the object, okay, this one here, we know that that force, if we're moving at a constant speed, must balance with this downward force. And you're like, what downward force? Most of you will recognize that the force that we're overcoming is the force of gravity, m times g. Okay, well, this implies that therefore, the force that is acting is equal to the force of gravity in this case, which is just mg. So we need to over, like, just balance that out and move upwards at a nice constant speed, ignoring the fact that initially that force had to be bigger than gravity in order to make it start moving. All right, so what does that tell us? Well, we can substitute mg right here in for that force. So we end up with this equation, work equals mg delta d. Now in this case, we're like, oh, delta d, what is that really saying? Well, delta d, recall, is the displacement of the object. Well, in this case, we have a vertical displacement. And if we've got a vertical displacement, we can use the analogy that delta d is really just the change in the height. So we're going to make a small change of just variable uh, definition here. And we're going to write that this is work equals mg delta h. So this is basically the amount of work done in order to uh, lift the object at a constant speed over some height delta h, over some displacement delta h. We're just overcoming gravity, and we get the mg delta h. Now, from here, um, we're going to do one step further, and that is we also know that work is simply the change in the energy. Now, I'm going to use the subscript g here because that's our gravitational energy. So the amount of change in the gravitational energy is the work done, the transfer of energy from lifting it from one height to another height. So we end up with this, that delta or work equals delta Eg equals mg delta H. Now some people like to break this down um, a little bit further. And what they like to do is they say, well, what is delta H really? Well, in that case, if you want to look at just a little simpler, or actually expand it out, mg h2 minus h1. So if we know the height variation times it by the weight of the object, that will tell us how much energy was required to lift it there. This can be further simplified to mg just by multiplying the bracket out. So what this says is this is our initial gravitational energy, or eg1. And this is our final eg2 that will tell us how much work is done and again these two variables are the same <clears throat> all right so I have one point to, to, to note for this is that when we measure, if we're looking at just calculating eg, how much gravitational energy an object has at some height, we always need to be measured from, a, from the lowest relative point, so the lowest uh, point. So I mean you could have an object, and I can just do this as a little aside uh, over here. For instance, if we have a table situated right here, and we've got some object on this table, maybe an apple. The object, the EG, the amount of gravitational energy it has with reference to the table would be zero. So EG equals zero with respect 
to WRT with respect to the table top. This means that the amount of gravitational energy stored on it, stored in it with respect to the tabletop is zero, meaning that it's not going to fall from the table to the table because it's already on the table. However, there is gravitational energy associated with the difference in, with respect to the ground. So in this case, the EG with respect to the ground is greater than zero with respect to the ground. And if we pick some other heights, you know, some partial distances part way through, or put a little stair there, um, the EG would be different um, with respect to each of those positions. That means that if this object were to fall, it would start to lose that gravitational energy and transfer it into kinetic energy until it hit the ground. Another point to note is that there are times when the amount of work done would also be negative. So if you're reducing, so if an apple is, or the cat for this instance, is moved from a higher height, right, an initial height from a high height to a, to a lower height, you're going to get a delta H of negative, in which case your work will be negative, and therefore you've done negative work, or gravity's done negative work. But on the way up, it's positive work.